Benjamin Franklin once said, there are only two certainties in life, death and buggy code. And if you've played Schedule 1 for more than five minutes, you've definitely experienced both. But let's be real, making a video game is hard, and making one all by yourself is 10 times harder. Between new content, legal drama, and a Discord full of people pinging you asking when's the next update, it's borderline impossible to keep up. Which is why a few weeks ago, Tyler, the one-man army behind Schedule 1, hit me up and asked if I could help him hunt down some bugs. Bad idea. Because I didn't just give him a list of bugs. Oh no. I found out how and why those bugs happened, down to the exact line of code that needed fixing. And within 48 hours, he dropped a patch that fixed every single bug I sent him. So I figured, why waste a perfectly good bug report? Let's turn it into a video. We're diving deep into the weirdest, funniest, and most game-breaking bugs I found in Schedule 1, and how Tyler fixed them. Now before we dive in, I need to make something very clear, because I can already hear people pulling out their pitchforks. I am not the reason the unpackaged product bug got fixed. Probably. I liked that bug and I wanted it to live, so I didn't put it in the bug report. And I didn't kill Buggy. But I did make a video about it. That video did hit 750,000 views, and Tyler is a subscriber of the channel. My bad, y'all. Let's get into the bugs. First up, we got the net worth bug. And this is one everyone wanted fixed for a long, long time, so I had to make sure it was included in the list. Basically, ever since the game launched, the way that Schedule 1 has calculated net worth was completely broken when it came to drugs. The system didn't care how your product was packaged, meaning a full brick of cocaine was valued the same as a single eight ball. Yeah, that's not just wrong, it's disrespectful. A brick has 20 times more product. It's like saying a Bugatti is worth the same as a tricycle just because they're both parked in your garage. Now to explain how Tyler actually fixed this, we gotta peek under the hood a bit and talk about how net worth is calculated in general. Every item in Schedule 1 has a function in it called Get Monetary Value. That function basically lets the item tell the game, hey man, I'm worth this much money. So when you save the game, the system goes through every single item you own, calls that function, and adds it all up to figure out your net worth. The issue with packaged products was that the function only looked at how many items were in the stack and their market value, but not how much actual product was inside each one. So Tyler patched it up. Now the system multiplies the market value and stack size by the actual amount of product inside the packaging. Bug fixed. Time to get that 10 million achievement. All right, next up is a bug that I guarantee you've seen. And I'd bet you $20 that if you opened your game right now and looked at your list of mixes, you'd have one named Aspen Death. In fact, nearly everyone has a mix named Aspen Death, but the odds of that happening naturally, basically impossible. There are 37 names in the first name list and 39 in the second name list. That means the chance of getting that specific name is 0.0000, .0, .0, 0 69%. So why does everyone and their grandma have Aspideth on their mix list? It's because of a bug. I mean, come on, this is a video entirely dedicated to bugs. You should have seen that one coming. When you create a new mix, the game assigns it a name based on its effects, meaning a generizing mix in one save should get the exact same name as a generizing mix in a different save. But under the hood, that name was being generated based on the hash code of that mix's effects. And hash codes, well, they can be negative. Now, usually that's not a big deal, but Tyler decided to use the clamp function on the hash code before using it to pull names from the list. And clamp turns any negative number into zero. So if your mix had a negative hash code, it just defaulted to the first two entries in the list, which happened to be Aspen and Death. Now, Tyler anticipated this problem and did try to fix this when the game launched by using the modulo operator to keep the hash codes positive. If you're not familiar with Modulo, it's basically like Division, but instead of saying how many times something goes into it, it says how much is left over. So it just spits out the remainder. And you can't really have a negative remainder, which is why in normal math, Modulo always gives a positive result. So it should work fine to sanitize hash code, right? Wrong. Again, C Sharp is stupid. Because in C Sharp, the Modulo of a negative number is still negative. I don't know why you can have a negative remainder, it makes zero sense, blame the nerds who wrote the language. But that's why so many mixes just defaulted to Aspen Death. Their negative hash codes got clamped to zero, and boom, same exact name. 
And to make things worse, if that auto-generated name was already in your list, the game would discard it and generate a new random name instead, which made the whole system feel totally inconsistent. So to fix it, I recommended Tyler just run the hash code through the absolute value function first to turn all the negative numbers positive and then clamp them. And that's exactly what he did, and it worked. Bug fixed. Now if two mixes have the same effects, they'll always have the same name. All right, now let's move on to a legitimately game-breaking bug. When you make a new mix, if you try to name it with just a single space, literally just hit the space bar once, the whole game bricks. Now, if you're curious as to why this happens, it's probably easiest if I just walk you through what's going on behind the scenes, so buckle up for some nerdy shit. When you put in a new mix name, the first thing the game does is store it in a string, and then it runs a basic check to make sure the string isn't empty because the mix name is null, if it's actually empty, the game just straight up crashes. It has no idea how to handle it. But if the name passes that initial check, it moves on down the pipeline. The code will convert the whole thing to lowercase, strip out any invalid characters, things like parentheses, slashes, and yes, spaces, and then finalizes the name and stores the data for this mix in your save file. Now, you might be thinking, what's the issue? But You'll see it once we run through a few examples. Say you name your mix, Benji is cop? The code will check that it's not an empty string, which it isn't. It'll make it all lowercase, strip out the spaces and question marks, and then save the strain as Benji is cop in our save file. Perfect, no problems there whatsoever. But now imagine we name the mix space, just like a single space. It's not technically empty, there is a space there, so it'll pass the first check. The game will make it lowercase, which it can't technically do, but it says it does anyways. And then it removes the space, which makes the string empty and crashes the game. So to fix this, Tyler updated the isMixNameValid function to also check for names that are just white space, and also throw those out. So bug? Not really fixed because the function only checks for spaces. It still lets through single character names using other symbols, like a semicolon or a backslash, which also gets stripped out, leaving the name empty again. Same crash, different disguise. So if you've got a better idea, feel free to be a backseat coder in the comments. I'm genuinely curious what you all think. It's a weird little bug, super niche, but it's also hilarious that one single space can take down the entire game. Up next, we have a bug that affected the packaging stations, and this one is actually kind of funny. If you've been playing for a while, you've probably heard people say to only give your handlers Mark 1 packaging stations, because the Mark 2s just make them slower. And for a while, that was 100% true. You see, Tyler intended for the Mark II packaging station to be twice as fast, but thanks to a little goof, it actually took them twice as long to get the job done. And this whole bug boils down to every programmer's worst nightmare, math. Let me break it down. You see, unlike us, employees don't have to manually package products one by one. Instead, the game just runs a looping animation a few times and then magically packages everything all at once. Each type of packaging station has a value attached to it called Packaging Employee Speed Multiplier. The higher this multiplier, the faster the packaging should be, at least in theory. On the Mark 1 station, that multiplier is set to 1, so no speed boost. But on the Mark 2, it's set to 2, which should cut the animation loops in half, making it a lot faster. But that's where the math betrayed us. Every time a handler goes to use a packaging station, the game starts with a base number of five animation loops. Then it divides that number by the handler's packaging speed, which for now is always one. Cough, cough, future update, cough, cough. And then it multiplies that result by the packaging station's speed multiplier. So for the Mark 1, the equation is five divided by one times one, five loops. And for the Mark 2, it's five divided by one times two, 10 loops. So the Mark II is actually twice as slow. But where did Tyler go wrong? Well, it's time to go back to grade school and remember PIMDAS. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally because to fix this bug, he literally just added some parentheses. That's it. That's the entire fix. He added parentheses. Bug fixed. Don't you just love math? 
The next bug needs a little bit of backstory. A few videos ago, I revealed that the best day to sell gold at the pawn shop was Thursday, and it spread like wildfire. Everyone in the community was talking about it. Hell, people were hitting 10 million net worth just by flipping gold bars. This trick essentially turned the pawn shop into a free money printer. But here's the twist. The reason that gold sold best on Thursdays was because everything sold best on Thursdays. Turns out, every item in the game had Thursday as its top selling day. It was bugged from the start. And honestly, this one isn't even on Tyler. It's on C Sharp, which is Unity's programming language, and it has a lot of problems. Here's what happened. When calculating the best day to sell an item, the game takes the first letter of that item's name, adds it to the current weekday, and then runs it through the get hash code function to spit out a pseudo-random price variation. Which should work perfectly fine, right? Well, here's the catch. C Sharp's get hash code function has a weird quirk. It doesn't function at all with strings that are shorter than three characters. And in Tyler's original code, first letter plus weekday number only makes a two character string. So C Sharp just kept returning the same hash value over and over for every item, making every item's best day for selling Thursday. So how did Tyler get around this weird quirk? Well, in the patch, he rewrote the code to grab the first two letters instead of just one, which should have made the string long enough to work properly when you add on the weekday. But he made a classic programmer mistake. He forgot a set of parentheses. I'm not kidding, that was the only mistake. But because of those missing parentheses, the code actually ends up grabbing just the second letter and not the first two. So the string is still only two characters and the hash function is still broken. So yeah, one pair of parentheses fucked the whole pawn shop system. Bug, not fixed. But let's be real, seeing how quick he fixed everything else, this'll probably get patched tomorrow. The next bug is a little controversial and uh, I might be catching some heat for this one. So there used to be a weird price discrepancy with the coca seats. If you ordered a dead drop, they only cost 80 bucks. But if you requested a delivery, suddenly you're paying $150 per seed. So what was the cause of this pricing mismatch? Well, I've got a theory. If you dig into the game's code and check the price list, there's actually a manual override in the dead drop section that forces the seed price to $80. This override completely ignores the base price that coca seeds are supposed to have. So here's what I think happened. Originally, Tyler probably wanted coca seeds to cost 80 bucks. At least that was the plan. But somewhere along the way in development for balance or progression reasons, he bumped the price up to $150 and just never disabled that little override hiding in the dead drop logic. Now I'll be honest, when I reported this bug, I was hoping the fix would go in the other direction. You know, make everything 80 bucks again. But instead, Tyler nuked the override completely and made the price $150 across the board for coca seeds. Bug fixed. And the last bug I want to talk about is the one that I'm genuinely sad to see go. I didn't report it. I didn't want it gone. But Tyler found it, and he killed it anyways. The whole community has been grieving this loss. Because now... We can't sell unpackaged product anymore. You see, back in the good old days, if you scheduled a deal through your phone, you could just show up with raw product. No jars, no baggies, and your customer would still take it. But for samples, well, you did have to package those. Kind of weird, right? Well, it all comes down to a function in the code called applied packaging. This little piece of logic is what checks whether your product is properly packaged. Tyler made sure it was used for street deals and samples, but he just somehow forgot to apply it to meetups and phone deals. It was a tiny oversight, one of those beautiful, accidental loopholes that made life a little easier for all of us. And yeah, I always knew it would get patched eventually, but still, it stings. Bug fixed. So there you have it, seven funky little bugs that I helped get squashed. Moral of the story, fuck C Sharp. I hate it with a passion, and nothing in that programming language makes any sense. But what does make sense is clicking that subscribe button. Trust me, it's worth it. Stay silly, y'all.